From the lowest level, a computer simply fetches an instruction from memory and then executes it. Once it's executed that instruction, it then fetches another one from memory and executes that. So this process is just repeated for as long as a computer is powered and it's known as the instruction execution cycle. Now we can summarize this in three stages as fetch, decode and execute. So an instruction is fetched from the memory and copied to an instruction register inside the CPU. The instruction is then decoded and once it's been decoded, it is executed. So going back to the architecture of a, this simple computer, we've got all the parts here inside of the CPU, then we've got our separate uh, memory. So during the fetch cycle, the value in the program counter is copied to the memory address register. The location in memory pointed at by the memory address re is read. So the, memory, the value in the program counter is essentially the address in memory where, once, where the instruction is stored. The instruction in memory then is, in, is then copied to the memory buffer register and then that's copied to the instruction register and the value in the program counter is then incremented ready for the next time. So we'll look here. So the value in the program counter will be copied to the memory address register and suppose this contain you know the memory address register just suppose it contains the value 99 whatever instruction is at address 99 this might be 0101 for example this will just be copied to the memory buffer register so the 0101 will be copied to the memory buffer register and then that would be transferred to the instruction register so we get 0101 be copied to here. So now in this example we are just assumed it was fetching instruction 99 so the incrementer would increase so and if we're just assuming that we're instruction we're just executing instructions that are one byte 99 would then increase obviously just to 100 and then the next time around we'll just fetch instruction 100 and so on. So the next step in the instruction is the decode step. So this is where the instruction in the instruction register is decoded. So there's typically different types of instruction. So these can include data processing instructions. So these are the ones done by the LEE. So we're doing addition, subtraction, logical operations, and so on. We can also load data from memory. And we can also store data back into memory. So the control unit that determines what kind of instruction is in the instruction register and how to proceed. So a microcontroller is an example of a load store architecture. And this means that data stored in registers, it's only data that's stored in registers can be operated on. So data in the main memory cannot be operated on directly. So it first may, must first be loaded to a register. So that's why we'd want to load data from memory we have to load data from memory into a register. Then we can do some operation on it. That would store it back into a register. And then we would then we could store the data from a register back into memory. So for this decode step, we've got our instruction. So I'll just, just assume it's whatever this value. So the control unit will look at some specific bits, for example, and that these bits here, 101 for example, might mean it's a particular instruction. So the control unit, we can see the arithmetic logic unit here, we've got our inputs A, B, say our output Y. But we know we've also got some control bits which control which operation the LU does. So that the, the actual operation done by the LU, if it's a data processing one, will be, you know, come from these control bits here. And then, you know, we're doing a um, if we're doing a loading um, load instruction that will essentially get in the value from memory and load it into a, a register and a store instruction will be getting a value from this register 
you know, and putting it into the main memory. So after we've fetched an instruction, and we've decoded an instruction, we need to execute it. So what actually happens depends on the type of instruction that's being executed. So for a load instruction, data from memory is written to a regi register in the register bank. So the address of the memory location to read from may be stored in another register. For, so this is a um, just an example here. So we've got this is a load. So once, so here we're going to assume that the address is stored in R zero. So we're going to load the value that's stored in address R zero and copy it into location R two. So first we're looking when this is executed the value that's in R0, so for example, say R0, say this register contains seven, obviously in binary it's gonna be, if I just do a nibble, zero, one, one, one. So supposing register R0 contains that value, this um, will be copied to the memory address register. So then when this is executed, whatever value is stored in seven, so here to say seven contained um, zero one zero one. Whatever value is in address seven will be copied via the memory buffer register because we can't. You know this memory buffer re register acts as well as a buffer between the memory and the register bank. So that value will be copied to the memory buffer register, and then it will be copied to uh, to. So that's where we're loading. Um, that's when we're executing a load instruction. We're loading data from memory into a register. Now for a data processing instruction, the LEU carries out the operation on data in the registers. So this, and then the result of this operation is also written back to register. So this is a hallmark of the load store architecture. So the LEU cannot access the external memory directly, you have to go, it can only uh, do operations on and store the results of operations back into the register bank. So in this example here, we're gonna do add instruction. And we're gonna, so for this particular syntax, we're gonna use, it's, this essentially means whatever value is stored in R5 and R7, we're gonna add those together and store the result back into R1, so register one. So look, when this particular instruction is executed, so let's say the value two um, was in R5 and say three was in R7. When this is executed, those obviously will be added up. So there'll be the control bits, you know, the correct control bits to select the add operation will be selected. These two values will be put into the LEU and then the output will be fed back to register one. So five will be copied into here. And the final type of instruction to be executed is a store instruction. So this is where data that's in a register is written back to the main memory. And again, the address of the memory where we want to write to will be stored in another register for the, so in this example, we're gonna store an address, the address that's in R0, and then whatever value is in R3, we're written to that address. So for example, R0 contains 36. That will be um, put into the memory address register and used to select um, location 36 in memory, and then Suppose we have the value 99 in register 3, that would then be copied. So location 36 would contain the value 99. So that's a store, store instruction. So moving a value in the register bank into a particular memory location. So that highlights the fetch. Um, the code execute uh, cycle.
So this is where we're just going to fetch the code, execute, fetch the code, execute. But to increase performance, a technique known as pipelining can be used. So it's kind of shown on the right here. So imagine this is the first, you know, say time T0, so the first clock cycle. So this would be a first clock cycle, a second clock cycle, third clock cycle, and so on. So you can see each, the beginning of each cycle in this, how I've drawn it now, is a positive edge. So every t we're saying, you know, on every positive edge of the clock, this is the start of a new clock cycle. So this will be T0, T1, T2, T3, so on. So in time zero, so in the first clock cycle, we would fetch the first instruction. And then in the second clock cycle, we then start to decode that one. But why are we decoding the first, we'll call this instruction zero, instruction one, instruction two, instruction three, instruction four, and so on. So why are we decoding instruction zero? We can be fetching instruction one. And then in the next clock cycle, while we're executing instruction zero, we can be decoding instruction one and fetching instruction two. And similar the next clock cycle, we execute instruction one, decode instruction two, and fetch instruction three. So you can see once this gets underway, it just means on every single clock cycle, we're executing an instruction. So, you know, it's more efficient because if we didn't do that and we, on every clock cycle, we're just doing fetch, decode, execute, fetch, decode, execute, fetch, decode, execute, and so on. You can see we're actually only executing an instruction every three clock cycles. But by using this pipeline, so this is known as a three stage pipeline which is found in um, Cortex M3 microprocessor core. It means that on every clock cycle, we can be executing an instruction.